What's up guys, welcome back to Laser Everything, and today we have another episode of the Lightburn for Galvo Crash Course. Today we're going to be reviewing a new tool that came out in Lightburn 1.5. In this case, we have available in the beta version, the 9 point correction tool. Now this is essentially going to give you a Lightburn alternative to what we would normally use core file for in EasyCAD 2. This may also give you the opportunity to completely skip having to switch back to EasyCAD 2, which for a lot of people wasn't even an option in the case that you were using, for example, a Mac. So what you can do now is you can go into the laser tools menu and look for calibrate Galva lens and nine point correction. So again, this is in the beta version as of recording. We may get additional point or advanced correction at a later date. However, for the time being, we can show you how the basic principles of this works. And again, the viewing and the going through the menus may change a little bit, but we anticipate that the majority of this is probably gonna remain mostly the same since it is in a release candidate of the version of Lightburn that we're looking at. So we're gonna be doing this on the Makira laser. And in that laser, I have a 150 lens. So I'm going to fill out 150 for the work area of the lens. Now it gives you a range to aim for that you wanna aim for 85 to 90% of the lens field size for the output box. Now that's going to give you an ideal use case of being able to correct the lens. You don't wanna correct the lens for a super small box when you have a big lens. So again, you wanna aim for that target and that is best practice. So we're gonna go ahead after we set our lens size, we're gonna go and hit next and we're gonna set our parameters here. Now this is going to be specific to the material and you essentially are just drawing a line on the material that you're testing your field with. So you don't wanna go super crazy with trying to dig deep into the material or anything. And as of right now, the limit on speed is actually capped at a thousand for some reason. I'm not sure if that's intended, but we can work with that here. And I'm gonna set my speed to 90 and my frequency to 50. And you do have Q pulse control if you have a laser that has Q pulse unlocked. In my case, this is a 30 watt Rekus source. It is not a MOPA source. So I can just skip that field entirely. And what we're gonna do is turn on the laser and we're going to frame it up on the material and we're gonna see what the output looks like. So now what we need to do is we need to go ahead to the next step now that we have that marked. Now, before you go and move anything off the bed, the orientation of the mark and everything that happened is very important. So be sure not to rotate the orientation of this mark until you move forward to the next step and understand why. What we need to do is we need to relate the orientation of the dragon so that it knows the direction of the laser in which it was marked. A lot of the time this can get confused and what may happen is you may end up accidentally rotating your workspace 90 degrees or 180 degrees or reversing an axis by accident because this is how the laser tells what orientation it is burning in so that it can correct it digitally. So referring back to the laser, looking at it head on, we know that this is the output direction of the dragon. So we're gonna select this one in my case and move forward. Now yours may be any one of these other ones. You need to specifically look at the output that you got. Now that said, we're gonna move forward and this is where we take measurements. So this is where having a micrometer is going to help you. So now we basically need to read or measure each of these numbers and input them into the selected field. So we have six measurements we need to take on this screen. So we need to measure one and then put measurement one in. Measure two, put measurement two in. Now this is going to serve multiple purposes. It is going to help in correcting skew and bulge and getting the output looking square and proper, but it's also going to get things into the proper scale as well. So again, very important for various reasons, but you wanna be as precise as possible. This is where getting very close is going to be important because this can only be as accurate as you provide for measurements. So let's go ahead and measure number one.
Now you will see that measurements one and two will be very similar. Measurements three and four should be very similar and measurements five and six should be fairly similar. Now a little bit off is okay because that could just be human error. We can only measure so accurately with the tools that we're using in this case. And we're also trying to measure on paper. So it's gonna be a little subjective to our eye. But if you're getting measurements that are very far off, so for instance, if the measurement from three is several millimeters off of measurement four, this could indicate that you may have a defect in your lens, or more commonly, it could also indicate that your head is not parallel to your work surface. So either your material isn't flat in relation to your lens, or your work surface isn't flat in relation to your lens. We do have another video that'll be linked below that can help troubleshoot that for you if you need it. However, there are instances where lens could be the issue. There are several factors, but you do want to troubleshoot before just assuming it's your lens. So going ahead forward, we're done with our horizontal measurements. We need to go ahead and do our vertical measurements. All right, so we're back and we just got our measurements put in. Now again, these are measurements that work for my particular lens. You're going to have to take these measurements and you're going to have to apply them to your particular lens for your particular work area. And these are values that are going to change from lens to lens, kind of like a fingerprint. So that said, we're just gonna go ahead and click next after we have our inputs in. And we do want to make sure that every measurement aligns with where the number is on this chart and we're gonna go ahead and move forward. Now, this is the results of our calibration. So it is essentially going to give us the values as if we were to have manually changed the Y and X axis for scale, bulge, skew, and trapezoid. So if you wanted to, if you copy these down or take a screenshot for your results, not for mine, but these are able to be referred back to, you can manually type them in and you don't have to go through the process of doing this again. Now granted, this only took maybe five minutes, but you can save that time if for instance, you needed to rebuild your device profile that goes with your lens. So you have that. Another option here that you have is field. So maximize working area. What this allows you to do is in theory, you can select this. It's going to change the maximum size of your field and it's going to essentially provide you a new field size and allow you to get more out of your lens based off of how much skew and bulging correction it needs to do based on also the scale. This allows you to get just a little bit more out of your lens if you needed to do so. Your mileage may vary with this, your results may vary, but go ahead and give it a try. In this case, what you can do, and you'll see that it's affecting your scale because it's going to affect your scale in software versus what you're getting physically. Again, your mileage may vary. The effects of this may also change in the future, but this should get you going. And this does give you the capability for some who are working with Mac, for example, or Linux, where they simply didn't have access to EasyCAD 2 in a comfortable and meaningful way. And now you can do your lens corrections without having to spend a ton of time doing it manually. And that said, once you go ahead and hit done, this will now apply to your device profile. Now that we've hit done, we can go ahead over and we're just gonna validate that it's in our device settings. So we wanna go up to device settings at the top and we're gonna find that these are indeed the settings we were expecting from the finishing screen of the lens calibration. So with that, all that you have left to do is you can either proceed or you can move forward with testing to see if this is actually what you expected. You can simply do that by making a square the majority of the size of the lens and you can test the output by measuring it again. But that said, that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed. If you really enjoyed the content, smash that like button, get subscribed, and consider checking out the Laser Master Academy. It's the number one way to support our entire team, what we do every day, and we couldn't do it without the awesome members at the LMA. Hope you all have a great day, and we'll see you in the next one.